We are back with Nintendo Week. I'm still Colin McIsaac, and we, the you are still Ben. Alex is no longer with us, unfortunately. I guess he has to go to work like a nerd or something. Like um, a nerd. Like a nerd. Um, and uh, what happened? I it's I'm 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 losing my ability to function as a human. The Nintendo Switch was revealed. <laughs> Nintendo has a new console, everybody! Woo! Um, <laughs> oh god. I, <laughs> maybe I need to retire early. Um, so the Nintendo Switch, Ben, what do you think? Um, I, for the most part, the, the reveal was about what I was expecting. Or I, I shouldn't say the reveal was. I should say the, right. the hardware itself was almost yeah. exactly what I was expecting. Definitely. But I've been pretty pleased with all of these rumors and reports we've had over the last few months. So even though there wasn't that much in terms of hardware surprises, uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the product. Yeah, so um, I, I think the, the main thing that I noticed that I am not too keen on with the hardware is, I mean, not to get critical right away, because, like you to. said, well, yeah, right, well, <laughs> we've been praising these concepts for a long, long time now, so to see them for real is exciting and awesome, but it's also not particularly new. I think the aesthetic design of the docking thing is interesting. It might feel a little too clunky and industrial to catch a lot of consumers' widespread attention. I kind of wonder about that. But I think the, the main thing that I'm concerned about with the controllers is uh, they're very lopsided when you use the joystick and the face buttons. And they seem very small, so I don't know how well that's going to sort of afford that local multiplayer where you bring the NX or I guess the Nintendo Switch NS, wow that's easy, on the go. <laughs> You made that switch pretty easy. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> That's improbable. Yeah, I, I guess I don't. I'm not really going to be sure how I feel about the uh, the detachable controllers and things like that until I've sure. got one in my hand Definitely. and I can actually feel it for myself. Definitely. Um, but but seeing seeing the way they look, I don't know that it's really going to be comfortable enough for people who are not traditionally gamers or pay attention to Nintendo stuff. To be interested in trying it, say for example, like those basketball players in the promo, uh, taking out the NX at the table when they're done, and playing NBA. Um, I don't know that a lot of people are really going to be willing to do that kind of stuff if the controller doesn't really feel great. Um, but who knows, it could feel great. Um, I, what do I think you think of the name? I have to see. Um, I don't think it's a good name, but I think it's the best they probably... I can't think of a better one, so I, I, I don't have anything to really criticize like about Like you, it. I'm not super crazy about it, but I, yeah. I think that it's, it's good that it's sort of succinct and it's, I think, fairly easily uh, remembered. Somewhat catchy. Yeah. Not super catchy, but somewhat catchy. It right. just doesn't quite... It doesn't invoke a console in my mind when I think about yeah, it. Nintendo agreed. Switch. I thought of a light switch. Yeah, well, you know, I'm thinking some kind of like accessory or, or something like that. Sure. It doesn't or peripheral. Like a swatch. It doesn't immediately put the the idea of console into uh, into my mind. But yeah, it's a catchy agreed. enough name, so it's it's better than Wii U. <laughs> yeah, for, <laughs> sure. for yeah. sure. A big step up. Um, I yeah. like the logo a lot too. Oh, it's branding. amazing. Yeah, really good. I like the sort of yin yang vibe going mm -hmm. on. I love the Nintendo Classic Red. Like that looks great. Um, but yeah, just on the name. Um, I, I, the only kinds of things I can think of that would have been more sort of, um, would have been snappier and maybe sort of widely marketable. I, I don't know if that marketable is the right word, but I have not had nearly enough sleep in my lifetime. So, um, is something like the Nintendo Go or yeah, like the Nintendo, Nintendo Go Cross exactly or something thought. like that. And those aren't really very good names either. So Nintendo Switch, you know, it's fine. It works. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's see, the, there are, are a bunch of games and third-party developers that they announced who are supporting this system. Um, so some of the games we saw are, uh, Skyrim, which is amazing because that game is going to be portable for the first time. And, uh, yeah, Skyrim, I know, surprise. might not be a huge selling point in 2016, but Skyrim Remastered is one of probably the most anticipated games in the last year or so. Uh, and so... If that comes out on Nintendo Switch close to launch, then the selling point that Skyrim Remastered will be on a portable console is enough, I think, to really make that thing uh, go hand-in-hand -hand against PS4 and Xbox One. Um, just, just those selling points that you can take your games on the go, and it's not just Zelda and Mario and Mario Kart, it's 
actually the games like Skyrim, hopefully like Mass Effect Andromeda. Maybe they can get Red Dead Redemption 2. We'll see. Probably not. But, you know, <laughs> um, if those third-party games that everyone is buying PS4 and Xbox One for are coming to Wii U and the frame rate is stable and the games run nicely, or did I say Wii U? I meant NS. Then, then you know, that's an enormous selling point. And at that point, who has any reason to buy those games for anything but NS? While I wasn't surprised by any of the hardware reveals, I actually was surprised by... Uh, I mean, it was only short clips, but I was surprised by how many different software titles they showed off for. Yeah. It was sort of debut. To, I, I wasn't expecting that at all. I was expecting probably three to four, I would say. I mm-hmm. was thinking they would give us a glimpse of New Mario. I was thinking they would give us a glimpse of Breath of the Wild. Um, and I was thinking between a couple other games like Mario Kart, Smash, Splatoon, maybe Mario Maker, and like maybe, maybe like a third party game, something like that. I was thinking they'd probably reveal one or two more. And they did. They, we got Mario Kart, Splatoon, uh, and what surprised me was Skyrim and the NBA game, which doesn't seem to be something we know about yet. I'm not clear on that, but I also don't follow NBA games at all. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, so, um... I wouldn't say I was surprised by the quantity of software, but I was surprised uh, at what we saw because, well, the new Mario, for one, the first level that we saw Mario in looks to me like it's a kind of a hub world. Yeah, but or, or like it a town doesn't of look some like kind. it's a, Yes. I was, I was just okay, about to I say. I only got to see like six seconds of footage, but I'm uh-huh. super stoked for this Mario because it looks too. like a 3D Mario with like open spaces and large areas and things to do. Yeah, it, what I was thinking is that this area is sort of like, it's got the Mario 64 structure of mm-hmm. like a castle grounds type area to explore, but this area looks like it has a very specific world theme to it. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking that the different worlds in this game are going to have their own castle grounds type areas. And I'm hoping that there's going to be a larger central hub uniting all those together. I don't know if there will be. That would be amazing. I don't want to get people's hopes up too much. Um, but Hey, but if we say it on the show, it comes true, right? Exactly. <laughs> um, but the other thing is, I noticed there's a heart in the trailer. So I think the gameplay is going to skew more towards that older Mario 64 mm-hmm. or Galaxy type kind of HP system rather than 3D worlds. You get hit and you shrink. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this, this definitely seems to be... Drawing some inspiration from from uh, Mario 64, which I am yeah, totally sure. okay with, because we haven't yeah. really seen a, a Mario game attempt to do that for for quite a while. And again, we, we just saw a very brief glimpse, but it was it looked very pretty and polished. Mm-hmm. And I actually heard that uh, this uh, it might have been from Emily Rogers or some someone else. I, I don't recall exactly. There's been so many people saying so many things lately, yeah. but that uh, Nintendo actually was originally planning to reveal the Switch in September, oh, yeah, and they delayed that. it because they wanted more time to polish the Mario footage. Yeah, I saw and that job too. job well done, if that's the case. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see, so what else was interesting? So, the other, the other interesting things about what we saw was Mario Kart 8 and Splatoon both seem to have new content, and the mm-hmm. question is how much new content? Is this Mario Kart 8 for Nintendo Switch? Is this Splatoon for Nintendo Switch? Or is it Mario Kart 9? Is it is it Splatoon... Mm. Uh, um, is cause, because we saw King Boo, who is not playable in Mario Kart 8, um, and we saw that the players can hold two items at a time. Which I'm um, so excited for. Yeah. And on the Splatoon footage, we saw several new hairstyles for these Inklings, and which look awesome, by the way. I'm so stoked. Um, and... Uh, something very minor, but um, you know those like horrifying skid, squid, kid, mid transformations uh, <laughs> yeah. that, that you get freeze frames of in Splatoon. Um, those transformations when the Inklings were popping up out of the ink at the beginning of the sort of competitive esports arena battle that they were showing off, mm-hmm. um, they don't look as horrifying. <laughs> um, so, I, you know, who knows if that's a minor tweak versus just something that they've been working on to smooth over for, like, a new game. Yeah, um, I think uh, you and Alex are, are both right. You know, over the past few months, you've talked a lot about how we'll probably see sort of, like, definitive versions of Wii right. U games on NX. And I think that's what's happening with both Mario Kart 8 and Splatoon. That's that's Agreed. my guess, at least, that these are new and improved ports rather than sequels. Yeah, um, the the... I think that's definitely true for Splatoon, especially because it lives on sort of as a, a game as a service, mm-hmm. um, as we've sort of described in the past. It's it's a more evergreen thing like Overwatch or League, 
Um, yeah. So a direct sequel may take more time. With Mario Kart, I don't quite know because if they have a big new roster and they redesign like the menus, for example, even if the UI on the racing screens and like a bunch of the race tracks are the same, uh, I can easily see them just saying, "Well, we'll call it Mario Kart 9," and just that's so much easier. <laughs> Maybe I, I don't know. It just it looked so close to being yeah. identical to Mario Kart 8 outside of the you know Kingdom yeah. and the two items. So definitely, definitely. We'll but I so guess we'll if uh, sports games can get away with switching up the rosters, adding one new feature, and selling it for 60 bucks every year, then uh, <laughs> Mario Kart can do it every three or four. Or well, whatever. yeah, exactly. That's sort of what I'm I'm seeing is like they can just add all that DLC. They can probably make you know they've had time to probably make a whole game's worth of new courses for the just four cups, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and then if they've got something like that, like 48 tracks and new characters, of course, then that's enough to call it a new game, I would say. Um, and then I think it's probably just easier on them from a marketing standpoint and branding. But again, yeah, who knows? Um, so let's see. What else was there? Um, there was some new Breath of the Wild stuff. They actually revealed some new gameplay footage this morning, which has amazing trailer music. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. That was so moving. Um, and then they, they did that uh, a time lapse video of the weather. Yeah, oh, was that was cool. gorgeous. It was kind of boring because it's four minutes of just like weather Rain. in the same <laughs> shot. Yeah, but it, w- it looked really pretty. So it's a good showcase of like the kinds of things that you'll see in game as you're actually playing and doing the interesting things. Right. Um, Another way to just make the world feel more alive. Yeah, for sure. And um, tr- the uh, a- NX NS reveal trailer uh, also showed a gigantic like moblin type thing yeah. that link was fighting um, I'm i thought if it would be like com- an overworld boss yeah it reminded me of an oni like be- breath of the wild's got a lot of sort of japanese inspiration obviously like hugely miyazaki inspired mm-hmm. um, i think he specifically onuma said it was largely inspired by princess mononoke which also has a lot of like mythological inspiration from like oni myths and stuff like that and this the tales of those sorts of heroes so that was really neat and let's see, what else? Oh, the third-party lineup. So NX is being supported by Bethesda from software. Um, obviously, companies like Capcom, Konami, Square Enix. Um, yeah, I'm sure Konami will release like some pachinko games for it. They'll release like Pro Evolution <laughs> Soccer and stuff. Yeah. And we'll see on Metal Gear. Um, but otherwise, probably not a lot. Oh, yeah. So, of course, Sega, Ubisoft, which we knew, um, Activision, easily assumed, Bandai Namco, Atlas, Platinum Games. Um, Some of the interesting ones, though, Unity, Cryware, um, Havoc, Warner Brothers, um, a company called Hamster, which is interesting (laughs) just for its name and the fact that it exists. Hamster Um, support confirmed. (laughs) Um... And, uh, oh, Epic Games, Koei Tecmo, of course, um, EA, of course, um, THQ Nordic, pretty easy, Level 5, of course. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I, that's good. <laughs> I'm not getting too excited about that, like, Telltale image they Games! Oh, I didn't play. notice this! Hold What's up! That? Telltale Games! Oh, yeah. Oh, but they do Minecraft, though. Yeah, yeah, they Minecraft got the story Minecraft mode. Story oh, mode, man. So. But okay, I mean, they, well, they could expand it if, assuming Minecraft Story Mode was a uh, sales success on Wii U, then they Absolutely. could sort of be prompted to release some of their other titles on uh, stream. It is going to take a while for you to not have to pause before, before saying Switch. See, I said it wrong anyway. I said stream instead of Switch. But I think oh, NX huh. every single time, and I'm going to do Me that too. for the next three years. I know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not super stoked about the, you know, sort of graphic they posted of here's all the people supporting us because, you know, we don't know whether support is shovelware yeah. or AAA. But exactly. uh, From Software was the one that kind of piqued my interest a little bit. Not because I play most of their games, but just because, you know, that's you know, they make Dark Souls and Demon Souls and right. Bloodborne and all those. So it was it was interesting to see them in the list of uh, developers supporting Nintendo. Yeah, and I love Dark Souls. I pray that that will be I pray to the sun that that will be uh, on <laughs> NX and I can take that on the go with me because um those that's another one of those games where I really feel like I love to be able to sit down and just dive in on the television, but if I could take it on the go with me and enjoy the actual gameplay sensation of it, um, that would just make me fall so much more in love. Um, so, and, and I'm, for those reasons, I am so excited for Breath of the Wild. Um, having Skyrim on the go will probably convince me to actually 
try Skyrim for once because um, I never I never got around to that because you just got to sink so much time into it. But yeah. if you can take it anywhere, pull it out whenever. That's that just makes the whole experience so much better. Um, but yeah, so from software, the other thing I was thinking, and this is much more selfish, but I really hope that they release 3D Dot Game Heroes on NX. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> because, uh, well, I, I won't ramble about it because everyone, no one knows what that is, but if, if you're interested, look it up. It's a great sort of like retro-inspired Zelda clone with customizable characters, and I made a link, and it was awesome. Um, mm. Bandai Namco... Do you think that's Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures? Do you think that's Smash Bros? Mm, you know, it, it's hard to say. You know, we've we've heard rumors before that they were working on a couple of games, including a sort of like you know new and improved version of Smash. So, mm-hmm. uh, but I I believe I, I I don't remember exactly now, but I think Smash might have been one of those titles where it was said that Nintendo was working on a, a version of it for Switch, but that they weren't sure if they were going to be able to uh, to do it because of... No, I think... So the two that, that were uncertain were Mario Maker and Splatoon. And okay, we see and Splatoon, well, now Splatoon is confirmed, so... Yeah. Okay, yeah. well then, yeah, I would say Bandai Namco is probably working on an iteration of Smash for uh, Switch, but outside of that, it's, it's hard to say how much more support they'll be, uh, be giving it. It'd be kind of cool to see if, uh, if they bring Xenoverse to it. Because I feel like that would oh, be okay, yeah. Dragon Ball, yeah. Because I feel like that would be sort of in line with the Nintendo audience. You know, I know yeah, at our sure. site where we have largely a Nintendo fan base, and when we post stories about Xenoverse, they usually get pretty good interactions. So I would imagine there's a decent crossover between the two. Yeah, I've been really surprised by that on the whole. How consistent the uh, Dragon Ball video game fan base is. Mm-hmm. And then also, yeah, there's the Dragon Ball game on 3DS as well. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, and uh, but I mean, what, so do we think that this means much more for other games like um, other other sort of in- possible enhanced ports like Hyrule Warriors, Pokémon Tournament, um, possibly Mario Maker? I guess maybe Donkey Kong and Wooly World, and I guess that's getting a little more into the, the questionable territory, but. Um, I certainly think there's this host of games like Hyrule Warriors and Pokémon in particular that didn't really get a proper chance to thrive and flourish on Wii U in the way that they mm-hmm. can on Nintendo Switch. Um, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I you know I can't tell you specific titles that I'm like predicting are going to receive new versions, but sure, Wii U only sold 13 million units, and if you remember, for the first like three years of its life, Nintendo kept really pushing the fact that they had the highest rated games in the market mm-hmm. according to Metacritic. Like, hey, we've got the top rated games, we've got all the nines and tens on Nintendo, but yeah. nobody wanted a Wii U. And I think Nintendo understands that these games did not sell as well as they should have for their level yeah. of quality. So it would be a pretty yeah. big missed opportunity if they didn't bring at least one or two of these high potential low audience games to switch for sure and those two games in particular i think hyrule warriors has a ton of dlc that would really be able to sell a system if they or not a system necessarily but at least sell the game a lot better Mm -hmm. if all that dlc comes in the nintendo switch version at launch and then they can release sort of a new uh hype train about dlc for the nintendo switch hyrule warriors Mm -hmm. with stuff like groose and other characters i don't even know who's left but uh (laughs) you heard it um, here first groose is going to be a nintendo switch seller (laughs) (laughs) the hope never dies ben (laughs) um and um but Pokémon, meanwhile, has more DLC coming. So, mm-hmm. like, like they're really going to send that out to Wii U to die. Like, obviously, that's got to come to Switch. Yeah, I mean, it's it seems like it would be another one that's sort of ripe for it. Yeah. Um, Especially with all the, the hype surrounding Pokémon Go, so... Oh, for sure, for sure. And Sun and Moon coming out next month. So, the last sort of uh, angle that I think we have to talk about, um, unless you have more... Uh, but for me at least, I'm thinking about the controllers and the control methods and whether those are going to be bundled, how they're going to be bundled, um, how they're going to feel to play, um, and, uh, what's, um, what's oh, and just, like, what else they might do with this idea of a control input, because there are a couple things that I noticed, um, that really stood out to me. One is they have shoulder buttons that I can't... Th- it's clearly uh, left trigger and left button, right trigger, right button. Mm-hmm. Um, but I couldn't tell if the triggers were analog or not. Because uh, they look like they're shaped like analog triggers, but Nintendo in the p- recent past has not been supporting those. Um, Here's hoping. And 
The other thing is just the shape of like the so these detachable controllers are called called Joy Cons, I Which think. Which is a dumb name. Yeah, that's really bad. Um, and they've got this grip that you can like slide them in and use as a controller um, when you're playing the Nintendo Switch at home. Um, and yeah, so I'm just curious what you think about sort of the aesthetics of it, the functionality of these things, um, whether the detachable controllers are going to feel nice to play uh, in your hands on the actual system, like as a handheld unit, when, not when you're using the kickstand and playing it like on a plane or something. Mm-hmm. Um, because there is the potential that they sort of wiggle around. If they're not really tightly connected into the unit, then it m- might not feel great to play. Um, just the visual design, I suppose, that I'm trying to get at is uh, seems like it might feel a little cheap. Yeah, I mean, they, they look okay to me, but uh, again, it's, yeah. it's hard to say until I've held the thing in my hand. For sure. uh, so I, I'm hoping that Nintendo knows better than to sort of pin all their hopes and dreams on a console that... Or a, a handheld unit that feels like crap in your hands and is loose and yeah. you know, doesn't. So I, I'm I'm trusting that Nintendo has made this feel fairly comfortable. Like yeah, when we first I do saw too. the Wii U gamepad, everyone's like, "Look at that big, heavy, clunky thing." Yeah, and it is a little unsightly, but it's actually really lightweight and fairly comfortable in your hands. So yeah, I'm hoping it, it's similar here, where once we get it in our hands, we'll be like, "Oh, okay, this makes sense." Yep. Same. And then they uh, they confirmed that you can use the. I hate saying this, the Joy-Cons, you know, you can use them tandem like a Wii Remote plus Nunchuck, or you can turn them sideways and use them individually like a just regular Wii Remote, so. Right, right. Um, Oh, and I I don't, this is such a small complaint, but I don't like the way uh, that the portable unit looks when you, like, take out the screen and close it. I think it looks kind of ugly, but. So, yeah, so the Joy-Con slide grip. I, I think it looks kind of just. A little bit ugly and ungainly, but yeah, uh, definitely. It, that's that's such a small complaint for me. Like, you know, it, aesthetics aren't that big of a deal for me. As long as it feels good, I'm not too worried about it. Sure, sure. Um, that that's that's one of the things I was getting at earlier about the aesthetics is um, that thing. If like if that's the controller set piece that's bundled with the console, I don't know if that's a good idea because I agree it is pretty ugly and uh, I think a lot more consumers are concerned about aesthetics than we are Mm -hmm. Um, I don't mind if it's ugly if I'm playing but you know if I'm going to be trying to bring it around town with me and show people hey look at this awesome NX or NS Uh, you can play all this stuff on the go and then I pull that thing out it's like mm, not going to convince people so fast yeah oh and the other the other uh, piece of that I guess is just the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, which they showed off in the video. Um, similar comments. Um, I think it looks like a fine controller. I mean, it's pretty standard, but uh, it does kind of look like the cheaper end of those like NVIDIA type sort of Bluetooth phone controller things. Um, I don't know. Just looking at it in the trailer, it looked like the feel of the buttons was not going to be so great. It looked like a lot of controllers that I've had bad not good experiences with i'm very <laughs> articulate today so yeah i'm i'm a little less certain about that although i guess you know on on the positive side i think it's a good step that they switched the right stick and face buttons back to a more traditional sort of controller layout because i don't think the wii u pro controller was great i know a lot of people swear by it yeah, but this is much more similar to like an xbox controller yeah switching the face buttons and the right stick was I don't think a good move. Um, I like to control her otherwise, but um, so the last, qu- the, the last, the last piece of that question. I realized this whole last several minutes was my last question uh, or last angle, but there, I guess there are several sub angles. Um, <laughs> my executive functioning part of my brain is not working well lately. Colin is fueled entirely by uh, caffeine. What was I saying? Uh, <laughs> detachable controllers. I have, I wonder whether they are going to uh, do this idea that we've talked about in the past where they might, down the line, make different kinds of controllers. So, like, not only can you take it at home and on the go, but you can switch the kinds of controllers that you're using. So, like, you can get a controller layout that's more like a GameCube or Nintendo 64 or Super Nintendo controller. Uh, I guess they wouldn't do some of those. those some of those wouldn't make as much sense. But um, <laughs> at least in terms of button layout or, like, console accessories, Um, Like, if there's some reason that they want to be pushing, um, like, a Guitar Hero attachment where you take off the left side of the controller or, I guess, the unit itself, um, 
and replace it with like these these guitar hero buttons. Yeah, I mean, I guess there's there's possibility for that. I hadn't really thought too much about like future possible control sure. options, but sure, yeah. Um, I guess it kind of gets into a question. All of these aesthetics questions get into this this other question. That's like, as Nintendo has been sort of shifting their vision of themselves to be more like an iterative tech company like Apple. Will they be revising this thing multiple times down the line rather mm-hmm. than introducing maybe like a smaller version or an XL version and then a new console, you know, five years later? Uh, will they be releasing a new NX in two years that is radically different aesthetically, has all the same functions and maybe just a little bit beefier tech or maybe like, you know, more powerful cameras and stuff? Uh, do you see that as a possibility? I personally think that that's, I don't know that I want to say likely, but definitely on the likely end of the spectrum. Yeah, especially if it gets off to a hard, uh, hot start and they see like a strong install base and then they don't yeah. want to uh, lose that install base a few years down the line when sure. the power just isn't enough anymore or you know the design is not really attracting customers anymore and they have options there because they can update the portable unit or they could uh you know they could also release either a new base unit or an attachment for the base unit that adds uh you know extra cpu or gpu power they they have different kind of options for how they want to sustain this thing if they decide to sort of make it the future and just release future iterations of it instead of a brand new console Yeah, that's actually a really good point. You know, they could introduce a new version of either end of this Nintendo Switch, Mm -hmm. and then consumers can sort of decide, well, I want a new base piece, I want the new portable piece. Um, I'm assuming that they'll sell this thing with both included in the box. Yeah. Um, And then consumers in two years who find themselves using the home console version more can maybe upgrade their, their dock, or people who find themselves using the handheld version more can maybe upgrade their handheld and you know, if they're still cross-compatible between these, like, mini sub-iterative generations of, of hardware, um, then it should be a pretty smooth process for both Nintendo and for consumers. And you mentioned, uh, especially if the NX gets off to a hot start, they can do that and sort of retain enthusiasm. I also think that the way they've designed this hardware presents them an opportunity to basically relaunch the NX with a hardware redesign, you know, two years down the line if it doesn't sell well from the get-go. Something like Wii U is an idea where they really fundamentally had to stick with it, but something like NX, you know, they can introduce so many new kinds of form factors Mm -hmm. and make the user experience radically different with the same core concept. You know, they've they've been saying NX is a family Family of consoles. Uh, Right, so I think that they can potentially do that. Um... I don't think they need to necessarily stick with their guns if this first Nintendo Switch doesn't do so great. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, All right, well, do you have any other final thoughts before we head out? Yeah, I I have a couple of quick thoughts. Uh, Sure. They're both not on things that were shown, but rather things that were not shown. Okay. Uh, And that is the price and whether or not the portable unit is a touchscreen. Oh, yeah. I think I have decent answers for both of those. Uh, so, you know, there was all kinds of leaks about NX prior, Mm -hmm. or, uh, now it's Switch, prior to its reveal, and, you know, many of them have been proven true, and so, uh, Laura Kate Dale from Let's Play Video Games, she has always said that it's going to be a touchscreen and that it's going to be a multi-touchscreen. Nintendo did not confirm or deny that, but she has, since, uh, since the reveal, she has said on Twitter that she is standing by that, that she has not heard any differently. So I think mm. we can expect a, a touch, uh, touch screen and a multi-touch screen, but yep. it is not expected to be a uh, like a focal point to the console. It'll be a feature, yep. but not something they're pushing. 100% agreed. Yeah. And then in terms of pricing, we also got confirmation of the rumors that it is based on the NVIDIA Tegra processor. NVIDIA came out and did a blog post, and they said, yeah, we're making a, a custom Tegra for this. Uh, so again, we don't have any price, but we can look at other products that use NVIDIA Tegras. And that's the the NVIDIA Shield TV and the NVIDIA Shield tablet. And so obviously this is going to be a custom version. It's not using the exact same processor that those devices have. But they come in a uh, a range of different models that range from $200 to $300. So I, I think we're expecting a fairly affordable console here. Yep, I completely agree. I think it'll probably be 250 if they can do it, uh, and if they can't, I think it'll be 300 I don't think they're going to push it any further than that, Agreed. and I don't think they should. Really crossing my fingers for 250 but we'll see. Yeah, I don't, I don't think 300 is really 
going to be a good solution for consumers. I don't think, I, I think it's going to be too high a price point for this thing to really take off. And I think they know that. So I, you know, if they can do it, I think we are going to see on the lower end. Hello, everybody. Thank you for listening to this Nintendo Week Clip NWC. If you like what you hear, please subscribe to us here on YouTube for more highlights and discussion videos from Nintendo Week Podcast, or subscribe to us on iTunes for weekly breakdowns of all your Nintendo news, discussion segments on subjects, games, and more, and tons of other features. Thanks for listening, and we will see you tomorrow with another NWC.